Hi, this is Mike Lawless, and in this video I'll discuss the PK Plus module in Gastro Plus. This is tutorial 5.4.2. PK Plus is an optional module within Gastro Plus. It quickly and easily fits parameters to create non compartmental 1, 2, and 3 compartment PK models. It can use multiple or single IV or oral plasma concentration time data. Oral bioavailability data can also be fitted in the model. Nonlinear simulations are supported by using the fraction unbound in plasma. Uh, intravenous uh, CP time data is stored in a tab delimited file with a .ipd extension. So we call these IPD files. Uh, they can be created in Excel. Uh, if you create them in Excel, you should save them as tab delimited text file and then change the extension to IPD. Over on the right, I show uh, the midazlam.ipd file read into uh, Excel. Uh, comments start with a single quote. Uh, the dose, body weight, and infusion times are very important uh, lines in the file. Uh, this infusion time can be uh, specified either as infusion time, T inf, uh, T space infusion, or any combination that includes INF. Uh, it can be lower or uppercase for bolus doses. This line is not required. Uh, there's also going to be a line in the file that indicates the number of records. So in this one, it's 14. And then we have the time and the concentration data. It's important to specify the units on the concentration data. And then the uh, time along here and the concentration. So there's 14 records in this particular uh, example. And we'll read this example into, or this uh, medazlam.ipd file into GastroPlus here in a few minutes. OPD files are similar to IPD files. Uh, but they are used for dosage forms other than intravenous. Uh, the format is similar to IPD, as I mentioned. Uh, there's a tissue field that indicates the tissue type, and in the examples I'll show the tissue equals plasma. In this video, I'll be performing four demonstrations. In the first demonstration, I'll simply fit the intravenous data for midazolam. Once the models are created, we export the fitted values for the best model back into the GastroPlus database. In the second example, we'll include oral data as well as intravenous data and produce a model. We'll refine this model in the third demonstration by including uh, oral bioavailability as a parameter that can be fit within the model. And then in the final example, we'll include FUP in the model in order to fit nonlinear kinetics. Here I've opened the Medazlam database that is in the tutorial folder of the GastroPlus directory. The only change I made was uh, pasting a new image of Medazlam into the structure image window. This database contains two records. In the first record, the subject consumed grapefruit juice before taking a dose of midazolam, whereas in the second record, the subject did not consume grapefruit juice. Records were for, are for 15 milligram, and you'll see if we go to the pharmacokinetics tab that none of the pharmacokinetic data has been entered for uh, either record. So this is the first record, and then I'm going to use control N to advance to the next record, which is the no GFJ uh, record. And again, you'll see here that no um, PK parameters have been entered uh, into these fields. Now I'm going to select the uh, PK plus item from the modules, optional modules pull down menu. And we'll read in one of the um, CP time files. Uh, so the first one we'll read in is the midazlam.ipd file. And you'll notice when I click that, it brings up the tabulated data window. Uh, here we have the number of data points. This was included in the slide uh, that I showed for the, uh, this particular file. Uh, we have the comments up here, and then we also have the dose, the body weight, and the infusion time. Uh, the tissue type is plasma by default for an IV dose. And then you'll see here the times and the concentrations. A uh, curve is drawn over on the right. 
and uh, we can view that either in log terms or absolute here. And when we click OK, it will take this data back into the PK Plus window here. And you see down in the bottom part of the uh, window, you can solve for either one, two, or three compartment models. We're going to use all of these simultaneously. And I'll simply click on the Solve button uh, to perform the uh, fitting to these. And as you can see, uh, it, uh, it performs the fitting and then selects the best model based on the Aki criteria. And it's chosen a two component model here, which we see here. And we can scroll down this window over here on the right. This simply shows the IV data uh, that was entered and then the non-compartmental fitting here. That's for the non-compartment, then a one compartment model. You can see the clearance, the volume of distribution, and then these relative to the body weight of the subject. So I scroll down further, we'll see the uh, predicted uh, values for the non-compartmental model, or excuse me, the one compartment model, and then going on to the two compartmental model against again the uh, clearance parameters, volume of distribution, the fitted values, and then finally in the last section it shows the uh, three compartment PK model for the data. For each one of the models, uh, we, we can toggle to look at either the one component or one compartment, two compartment, or three compartment models. And then for each one of the models, we can also display it in an absolute scale, a log scale where the y axis has been scaled. Or we can take a look at the residuals uh, for each model. You'll note that in the uh, one compartment model, the residuals are quite a bit higher than the two compart model. So it's changed from goes to 100 where the scale only goes to 30. And then the three compartment model, it's very similar to the two compartment model, uh, but uh, the IQ uh, criteria was better for the two. So that's why that's displayed there. With the two compartment model uh, selected, we're going to export this data back into the database. So that's simply file, uh, export, and uh, we'll export the um, two compartment model here. Now these will save, uh, you get a note that the parameters will be saved to the appropriate text box for this record. Uh, so we'll click OK and then go into Gastro Plus and see that it's imported these values. So here's the clearance um, in also in liters per hour per kilogram and then the volume of distribution and the kinetic constants from the uh, fits of the model. If we go back to the uh, first record by uh, going into the compound tab and just clicking here, uh, when we change the record, it's going to prompt and see if we want to save those values in the second record. We're going to say yes. And then within here, uh, we can simply go back into um, PK Plus and again, uh, export these into uh, Gastro Plus. And when we do this, it's going to go into the current record, which is the first record um, that we've switched to here. So switching back here, going into the Pharmacokinetics tab, again, it's saved this for both records. So there's the first record. Then again, I'm going to use Control N uh, to go to the second record and say yes here. And so we see that data. Now I can also go up to data, uh, save drug record, and that'll avoid the uh, prompting when I switch records. Now let's go back into PK Plus and uh, import multiple files. So if we go file, again, open CP time curve or CP time uh, profiles, and we're going to select uh, all of these um, uh, files here and I just clicked on the first file and then went down to the final file held the shift key and click to select them all and you see they're highlighted here uh, then when I click open uh, this dialog box is displayed uh, so this is for the PK plus files uh, you'll see we've loaded an IV dose and then three oral doses uh, the dose values are all filled in. They were in the input files. Now, if any of this data is missing, we could simply type it into the fields here and save it. All the body weights are 70, so it's going to use an average. Uh, we could click this button to use individual body weights if we wanted to uh, when performing the fit. Now, we'll simply click OK here. 
Once we return to the PK Plus dialog box now, uh, we've got a button here where we can edit the dosing information again. Uh, I should have mentioned on the previous uh, example in the intervenous, uh, you see the dose values up here. So this dialog box has changed uh, when you read multiple uh, files compared to one single file. Now once again we simply click the solve button and this takes a little bit longer since it's fitting uh, three values here. Let's go ahead and um, increase the size of this um, window here so that we can see uh, the graphs a little bit more clearly. You see again the, the fits here over in the uh, text window and then the lines here are the uh, models uh, from the uh, fitted values. Again we see that the two compartment model is the best model. Uh, we can examine the uh, residuals for these and we see that these models uh, even though the two compa compartment model is the best uh, these still are somewhat unsatisfactory fits of, of, of the data and that they're, they're very high residuals. Midazolam has high first pass metabolism and it needs to be incorporated into the models in order to get a good fit to the data. So to incorporate uh, oral bioavailability or to include oral bioavailability as a fitted parameter, we go into the edit dosing information. Uh, this will bring up the PK plus files dialog box and we'll simply click on the fit f percent for oral doses when we click ok now we go back into pk plus and again we'll just click the solve button here now the again these simulations take a little bit more time than the previous one because we have another parameter to fit uh, again we can scroll down and see the non-compartmental results uh, for each one of the uh, files. So first it's the IV, then it's the oral for a certain uh, one of the files, uh, the second and third files uh, together, the uh, analysis of the data, then the one compartment model uh, fits here, and the predicted and observed values, and uh, so on and so forth. If we go down to the uh, two compartment model, excuse me, it's up here, the two compartment model, uh, we see that the oral bioavailability was fitted at about 30%, and that's in really good agreement with literature values for 15 milligram dose of midazolam. Okay, so these are all uh, pretty good. Uh, we should be able to get a little bit better fit by including nonlinear uh, kinetics. So if we go up to the model options and choose nonlinear kinetic solution, uh, this will change the dialog box so that it'll include a fraction unbound uh, in protein, uh, to plasma protein. And we're going to change that value to 4 uh, in this particular example, and then we're going to solve the uh, equations again. And once again, this takes a little bit longer than the previous one because now we're including nonlinear kinetics. And I'll just go ahead and let that finish. Okay, the simulations or the uh, fittings have finished. Uh, here it's selected the three component or three compartment model here, and we can take a look at the residuals and see that uh, they're fairly low in this particular example. And so that uh, matches a good. Uh, they're for, we've, we've, we've matched the data fairly well with these parameters. If I change the log scale, you can see these uh, in excellent, um, that the, the lines go pretty much right over uh, the points and those look uh, quite good. So we've done some good fitting uh, with the three compartment model. So let's scroll down and look at the results from the three compartment model. That's towards the bottom here. There's the two compartment and now the three compartment model and uh, we see that the um, again the oral bioavailability here in this um, fitted model is 29.5 percent so again close to 30 percent which is great uh, then we can look at the uh, uh, clearance values uh, for the intrinsic clearance and we see that it's uh, 746 liters per hour in this uh, particular run and this is very close to the in vitro converted to in vivo value which is 943 liters per hour. This slide simply summarizes what we've discussed during this video. PK Plus is an optional module in Gastro Plus that fits IV and oral data to non-compartmental 1, 2, and 3 compartmental models. 
IV and oral dose forms can be fitted at the same time. Oral bioavailability can, can be included in as an adjustable parameter. Nonlinear kinetics can also be modeled by including the fraction unbound to plasma. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please send me an email at mlawless at simulations-plus.com. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.